Explain to our viewers the difference between a construction bid and a construction estimate. Change our format tonight, I guess. Mr. <laughs> 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 Welcome back, man. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for the hats, buddy. I like you. I sure are proud of you. Little swag tonight. I got the one in all colors. It's all yeah. stashed away, so I'm congrats. <laughs> Jeff Spencer, part hey, of Chris. Day. How's it going, man? Good, man. How are you? Good, good. Well, listen, we've had a very in-depth discussion this evening, all about bidding and estimating and markup and managing that shit at the line item level. I mean, we've, we've been in the weeds, and it's, it's pretty cool. I've been doing this discussion, but it kind of raised an interesting question. It seems obvious, but it, it isn't necessarily obvious based on the language or terminology you may be using. So I want you guys, you're the experts here, explain to our viewers the difference between a construction bid and a construction estimate. Well, I guess it all stemmed from we were talking about the some guys will, you know, here's the here we've got your estimate for you. Mm -hmm. Whenever it's a hard fixed price, which is actually a bid, yeah. and you tell a customer, well, I think it's gonna be this, so here's your estimate. Mm -hmm. And they they have in their head, well, this is what it's gonna cost. They didn't bring it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, this is what to cost. <laughs> That's why I always, I, I, I don't hardly ever, ever tell anybody a number, you know, sling from the hip. Yeah. In person, because I'm like, no, I'm I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah. Just because once you once you tell somebody, especially like an individual who's not in not in this you know industry mm -hmm. on a regular basis, you tell them a number, that's that's the number that they've got in their head already exactly. that's gonna cost. Yeah. That's saving well, your cost. Yeah. <laughs> that's what tells you the X, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like one thing, when you're giving a hard bid, you know, most of the time you have documents, you know, you've got plans. You know, either a certain percent complete, you know, like you may end up with, you know, like 50 or 60 percent drawings. Mm -hmm. But by the time you get to 70, 80 percent drawings, you know, those are good hard numbers that you can stand behind. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if something varies, you know, from those drawings, not not from your pricing, but if, if, the, if the drawings change or something changes on site, you have an option, you know, for, for change orders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like Luke was saying, with an estimate, you know, you just kind of going out and looking at, at, at this project that someone wants done. There's no documents. There's no plans. You're just looking at a raw piece of ground or whatever it may be. And like, you know, hey, I think, you know, this mm -hmm. is what it's going to cost. On average, you know, topsoil is about eight inch, six to eight inches thick around right. this area. But, you know, sometimes here, here in the middle of the field, inches, the, yeah. it could be, yeah, 18 to two foot, 18 yeah. inches to two foot. Yeah. You know, and that's a big difference because it doesn't just change the amount of topsoil that you're going to have to end up stockpiling. It also reduces the amount of fill material that, that you, you would be able to have to, to fill with and, as well. And a balance site may be end up being an import site now. Exactly, yeah. So now you're buying product somewhere else of bringing in to compensate for the extra, you know, 10 to 12 inches of topsoil yeah. you had to take out. Yeah, that's always something we always put in ours. Uh, if there's no no kind of geo reports or, or you know test pits, and even with even just digging like test pits, the, you know, there's still things that can go wrong sure. or that aren't uh, consistent with what the geo reports say. Yeah, well, but it's like a small sample set too, you know. But. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, it's it's. Uh, it, it's 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 very hard as far as getting getting yeah. numbers together. Especially like the less the less information you have, the you know the bigger of a range that it can grow. You know as far as for your the actual cost, and so you know I always try to I always try to put as much details in our our uh, scope of work and and uh, exclusions and acceptances that you know just because of this we uh, we don't know. The less we know, the wider the range can be. Yeah. It and an easy way to, to, to explain it is like if you've ever had a fender bender or something, you know, and you take your car to a body shop, you get an estimate, mm -hmm. and they tell you it's going to be $2,500. You go back to pick it up and waste $2,750. Mm -hmm. You know, there was one more light that was broken or, you know, some screws that were missing yeah. we had to order, you know, and then that's the extra cost. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, one thing, and I'm sure Luke has seen this too, you know, when you give an estimate and someone wants you to come and do a job, when you hit those situations, 
you know, when you hit, you know, the extra 10 or 12 inches of topsoil, don't strip it off. Mm -mm. Pull it down and like, you know, hey, we got more topsoil. Go get the property owner, come out, you know, or whoever you're working for. Yeah. So, you know, look, this is the issue. I can either stop and reprice this or you can get someone else to come in. You know, at this point, you just, you know, if you if you want, you can pay me what you owe me. Yeah, yeah just you take know. it from that point on to right. as, at an hourly yeah. time material because rate. if you go on and, and complete the project, you know, or do the yeah. project, and then ask for more money. Then ask for more money, yeah. it's yeah. not going to be yeah. good. Yeah. 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 yeah, change orders. Change orders can come from both sides, right. you know, and, right. and that's one thing I've also learned. Yeah, you don't do anything <laughs> yeah. without writing. <laughs> yes, yeah. I don't care if yeah. you can stand right in front of them and be the nicest person you've ever met. You don't do anything. That's right. That's right. Yeah, uh, it's just that. Yep. They they the job done. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah, we're we're working on a. We should be getting in some our service agreements finally. We uh, we ended up having to get a new lawyer, draw up our service contracts. Uh, Never ends. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't man, work. it's uh, there's a lot to it. That's for damn yeah, sure. Yeah, there's a lot to it that you never would have even thought of. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, we, we you know we, I mean, you've been in business for what? So we just start. We just started the beginning of our third year. Big third year. So yeah, a year longer than I think. So, yeah. yeah, but like you know, it's like yeah, you're working for the business, and then you're working in the business, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do about that until you know. Yeah, time. pretty sure my, my hair's gotten grayer. <laughs> you just wait; it gets worse. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> That's right. All right, All right. Well, fellas, Luke, Jeff. I yeah, y'all, man. And we'll just cut it out here. And just let you know. Well, first, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Check us out. You know, Bidding Cost Tool, probably do.com. We'll see you. Guys. See you guys. Thank you.